Hello and today we're going to talk about one of the most extraordinary watchmaking related projects I have seen ever. This is the Atomic Master Clock by Orec and you guys know that I have a rather enthusiastic nature but boy is this really something. During the last SHH we had seen a glimpse of this AMC, that's the short name of the beast, but since then we had the great privilege of digging much deeper as we went where this incredible machine object has been developed and assembled. And before going into the details with some of the team members that worked on this more than 8 year long development, let me very shortly and candidly summarize what is this phenomenal machine because yes we're still talking mechanical watchmaking on the watches TV but imagine that at night you would play your mechanical wristwatch not on the side of your bed but inside a portable atomic bomb James Bondy looking like aluminium device that I look I think looks so cool I think I need one and this device actually holds a super mega precise atomic clock inside it and it's called the mother clock okay it gets even cooler as the two communicate me mechanically no bluetooth uh, thing here or else as the wristwatch synchronizes with the atomic reference time okay this one can uh, easily understand but from then on the wristwatch can regulate itself depending on the measured difference between the atomic clock and the time found in the watch. And this is, is for me where it becomes even crazier because this mechanical intelligence is found within the wristwatch itself. It's actually part of the movement developed by Urbeck. Okay, let's hear the guys that worked on this and naturally this is the result of a fantastic teamwork under the creative watchmaking supervision of Felix Baumgartner, co-founder of the brand and I know that this project represents something huge for him. It says uh, Mount Everest in a certain way. An expedition started more than eight years ago. Let's go. So we have the wristwatch which is 100% mechanic. You put it inside like this, slide it into the special holder, you click it in, then you close it, then it's in the correct position for winding, for regulating and for synchronizing. Winding can be done manually, so if you push on the button, first it will lock the lever, so you cannot take it out anymore, so you cannot damage anything on the watch or on the winding procedure. Once the watch is fully wound, you can release it and then you can take the watch out again. During regulation and synchronizing, also the watch is locked, so you cannot interrupt the procedure. Always 5900, we are checking if the second hand is 100% showing the same time like the motor clock, which if, it is, if this is not the case, we will do the regulation either on the fast side or on the wrong side, depending if it's fast or slow. And one minute later, the motor clock will push the button and do the synchronization between the wristwatch and the motor clock, the atomical motor clock. Mm -hmm. Then we have different functions on the motor clock. Uh, we have for the time zones, we have plus quarter hour because we have quarter hour time zones, we have minus a quarter hour. Then we have for quicker regulation, plus one hour, minus one hour. We have a hold button. If you hold it, it will freeze the display to show you exactly that the one thousandth of a second, one five seven, uh, it's really running zero seven five. Then we have different functions. We have the reset button. If you like to reset the complete watch, if you like to get in the GPS time, which is the first time you, you switch on the clock, you need the time reference. So use the GPS antenna. Well, what would be the, the uh, situation, the reasons why you would need to reset this watch? Re the, re the reason could be either you, they have uh, done some le leap seconds uh, and you don't like, like to take, take them in manually, or uh, the watch has been too long off of the power. Uh, if it's run too long on the on the backup power, the, the precision is not as good as if you plug it on the power. Those buttons here are secured because if I press on the reset button and the whole watch is reset, it's not very good because you'd like to keep the correct time. So therefore we have the so-called secure button. If you press on this one, you will see those three buttons need the secure button to be pressed at the same time. If we do a leap second adjustment, we can press plus one second then okay now it's programmed we know in the next full minute we will add one more second which means the display will count not up to 59 and then switch to uh, to zero it will count up to, to 60 which means 59 and the 999 it will count up to 60 seconds and 999 and then we'll change only then back to uh, to the next uh, minute mm -hmm. once this one is in or even before now we can check Leap second, we already had programmed one second inside. Then we have other functions 
for the priority. We have different priorities. We could choose priority regulation or priority synchronization. Because we need a certain variation of off timing during the, the checking procedure to see if the watch is synchronized with the atomic motor clock. Uh, it's completely done mechanical. It's not so easy to do it 100% uh, mechanically because we have the motor clock, there we have a lot of electronics, but then we only have three inputs, mechanical inputs. That means two pushers to do the calibration, synchronization and the crown to wind the watch. And uh, you can see here on the movement, we have here the two pushers. This one is uh, to do the precision, that means we regulate the watch and it's 100% mechanically, we had to check whether the watch is too fast or too slow and then at the same time to a regulation, that means to correct uh, the, the beating rate of the watch. And then in the second step we will do the synchronization exactly at uh, zero seconds. We make the synchronizations by the mother clock and at the end we will also wound up the watch. It's zero second and zero minute, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. At midnight we will do this. And we have the advantage that we can do different, uh, different programs to do this uh, calibration, to do the adjustment of the watch. That means when the watch was a couple of weeks uh, not on the, on the motor watch, then we, can, we start with a synchronization so that we are sure both are at the same time. And then, 24 hours later, we check whether there is a, a difference. When it's going too fast, then we will turn this wheel by the left and we will act on the regulating system of the watch. And so, uh, after a couple of weeks, you are really precise. That means your watch will be regulated for your wrist. You will have the same time as on the motor clock, but it's really regulated for your wrist because during the day you are wearing the watch and then during the night it's placed on the, on the box and there it's checked, it's wound up, it's regulated and synchronized. And at the beginning when you get the watch you will put it on the regulation, then we will run a specific regulation procedure and once you are happy with the regulation of your watch, because it has been atomically regulated by the motor clock, then you can switch to synchronization and then we will do the synchronization in more shorter ways. So always when you take out the wristwatch, it will show exactly the same, the same time as on the, on the motor clock. Mm -hmm. We pull the release button then we can take it out and then we can put it here also on the special holder like this. On the wristwatch we have here our service indicator, then we have a second disc in the upper corner and now here as we have wound it just before, you see the power reserve is fully wound and then we have seconds and minutes indicator. You can have a look on the movement, 100% mechanical and here on the little wheel on the back you see the regulation which already has been done with the plus and the minus and then you see uh, the evolution of the regulation which has been done by the motor clock, you see the little levers which are responsible for synchronization and for the regulation. And uh, if we compare this to something done almost 200 years ago by Mr. Breguet, what are the main differences between the two systems? Well, uh, I think Breguet, he had the advantage that uh, it was done for pocket watches, so there was no bracelet, <laughs> so he can put immediately the pocket watch. But I think he faced the same difficulties, especially to do the adjustment. There, that's also the reason that only a few of the Breguet sympathetic uh, are able to do also this uh, regulation. Uh, I think otherwise, uh, what he developed, uh, we really uh, we are astonished at that time to do this. And so uh, for us it was clear uh, if even already Brugger was able to do these three topics in one clock, we also have to do the same, but we wanted to go further. And that's the reason we use an atomic clock. And so also our system to do the adjustment has to be a bit more precise than at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mentioned super precise uh, atomic clocks, but what are we talking about actually? So what we're using in uh, the AMC is a dual atomic clock, 
we have a rubidium and chick yttrium iron garnet uh, dual oscillator which means we have two sources two different sources and they will be compared together and this frequency will even be pushed to a higher frequency to the terahertz frequency and then with a special shotgun sequence bring it down again to a frequency which we can use to, to, to display the time but with a much higher precision than if you just use the direct signal. And if you have a, you have like kind of a fail-safe uh, uh, system, meaning that if you don't have energy, uh, more electricity coming into the atomic clock, there is something that is taking over. Yes, exactly, because the atomic clocks or the atomic modules are energy consuming. Uh, and if you, if you have a short uh, cut of the, of the circuit or of the, of the power grid, it's not possible to, to maintain the energy uh, available for the, for the atomic modules. Then we have a backup high precision quartz inside, which just for the few seconds will take over. We have the backup power, which is uh, illuminated. And if the time running on backup power was too long, that you could lose one thousandth of a second, then we have the synchronization, synchronization needed LED which will lit up and which is show you now if you like to have read again at the correct time then you need to do a reset read in the GPS time and then you're really 100% again on the atomic precision time. So yes, this is really a spectacular achievement, one of the craziest I've seen to date. And as you can imagine, this is definitely not something that will um, be mass produced. And we're only talking a few AMCs because yes, the price tag is uh, way up there. But for Tony Stark, I think it would sit very well on his desk for sure. A mega talking piece for any mega tech moguls out there. Just love it. Hope you enjoyed this. All the best. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to our patrons naturally. See you soon.